Hello everyone, uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to layer in scenario analysis into your real estate models. Now, uh, my co-blogger Mike has a post that discusses this same topic and I'll include that post in a link in the comments uh, down below. Um, I think this will add some color to that and this is more directly in response to a question I, I got from a reader. Um, who is needing to do this type of analysis and so I thought I'd, I'd, I'd build out a post um, and a video to show how I would I would perhaps do that. Now I'm using my real estate equity waterfall model. Now recall that this is not a standalone model. So this assumes that you have some sort of model with modules that is going to drive your um, your cash flow stream, right? So uh, perhaps it's an Argus model that's then dropping in cash flows based on assumptions in your Argus model, or or ideally it's an Excel model um, that ultimately is going to give you a stream of after financing but before tax uh, cash flows that we can then drop into our equity waterfall, and that will tell us where our LP returns are relative to our sponsor returns relative to property level returns. And in order to do scenario analysis, what we really need is uh, we need variables or assumptions that will change this cash flow stream. And as this cash flow stream changes, the IRRs are going to change, right? Um, because different streams of cash flow mean different returns. And so what I've done here, just to, to, to illustrate how this will work, is I've dropped in a tab. I've called it scenario analysis. And within this tab, I have assumptions and I have outputs based on those assumptions. Now your model is going to have these outputs and, and these assumptions perhaps in, a, perhaps in a different format. Nonetheless, this will give you an idea of how ultimately the scenario analysis is going to work using the data table functionality in Excel. So in this case, I have an assumption. Uh, recall blue cells are inputs, uh, black cells are outputs based on those inputs. And I have an assumption of a purchase price and a loan to value. And the purchase price and loan to value is going to determine my debt. And then the equity investment that's required is the difference, right, between the purchase price and the debt. Simplistic, I realize, but it serves its purpose for, for this case. The next two assumptions I have, terminal cap rate and this this uh, percentage is going to drive my disposition value or what I sell the property for at the end of, of my hold period. And then I have NOI growth rate. And what this NOI growth rate is going to do is it's going to change my stream of, of cash flows. Um, definitely not the ideal way to manipulate how my cash flows change uh, because this is just growing at, um, this is linear growth, which is not uh, indicative of the real world. Uh, nonetheless, it, it'll serve its purpose for this case. Uh, for you, uh, changes in uh, lease terms and market leasing assumptions, changes in, in occupancy and capital costs and a whole host of things is what's going to change your cash flow stream. Nonetheless, for this, for this case, what this does is it shows you that there are there are variables, or hopefully you can you can identify one variable that um, has the most impact on your year-over-year -year cash flow. And then what happens here is I dropped in just a value for my net operating income, and then I grew that value. You'll see here by my NOI growth rate. And then I assumed an interest-only loan because that's really simple to do, and. I came up with my cash flow after financing. This assumes no capital expenditures between NOI and cash flow after financing. Again, this is this is uh, um, for illustration purposes only. But what it's doing here is we take the debt uh, again, interest only. We subtract out that debt service, and it gives us our cash flow after financing. And then we just take it out over the 15-year hold period. In year 15, we are going to have a sale. Now the sale is simply, uh, we're going to be capping our year 15 NOI by our terminal cap rate. We're going to be uh, paying the loan off, which because it's interest only, the balance of the loan is the same as uh, the initial loan value. And that's going to give us our net proceeds from the sale. And then our stream, our net cash flow stream is simply in year zero, it's the amount of equity we put in. And then in year one through 15, it is our cash flow after financing 
plus in year 15 the net pro proceeds from sale. And so given this net cash flow um, row, we are going to link this back to our, uh, our real estate equity model. So I'm just going to simply link this to here, right? And with this link, let me copy it over. And I'm going to change this to black font because these are no longer inputs. Okay. And this stream of cash flow now is going to change based on these variables. And so, for instance, uh, we take this from an NOI growth rate of one and a half to two, and that changes if we come back here the LPIRR, which I believe was 10.84, now it's 11.57. So let me undo what I just did. And so now having this set up where this is linked back and our returns change based on our assumptions here, we're going to build a data table. Now to build a data table, this here is a two variable data table. You can also do a one variable data table. I believe Mike touches on that, so I won't get into it too much here. But how to build a two variable data table in Excel is pretty simple really. Uh, you're going to have your vertical uh, variable. In this case, I call it terminal cap rate. That's this value here. Now keep in mind your data table has to be on the same tab as the assumptions that are changing. I don't know why, uh, but if you put it on a different tab, it doesn't work. Hopefully in future versions of Excel, they'll, they'll fix this. But right now, this data ha table has to be on the same tab as the, assum the assumptions that are being manipulated. So uh, again, vertically, I have terminal cap rate. Um, I have five different scenarios that I'm testing. Okay, And then, uh, I'm sorry, uh, this is horizontally. And then vertically, I have NOI growth, which again, um, here's our base case, 6% and one and a half, right? Um, and then I do 0.5% uh, NOI growth, and then uh, minus 0.5% or 2.5% and 3.5%. So these are my scenarios for NOI, NOI growth. These are my scenarios for terminal cap rate. In order to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cell right here in the upper left-hand corner of our data table after dropping in this like this and this like this. And by the way, you can do as many scenarios this way and as many scenarios that way as your processing power will allow. So this cell in the upper left hand corner, I'm just going to simply link this to the, uh, the output that I want to test. In this case, I want to test LPIRR. Okay, so I'm going to link it to here, I'm going to lock that in, and there that is. Now, all I have to do is from here I'm going to highlight from this upper left hand cell all the way down to the lower right hand cell that encompasses all of the scenarios. Okay, and I'm going to go to data, I'm going to do what if analysis, I'm going to do data table, and then it asks what's my row input cell. What this is really asking is, okay this is my row up here, what, are, what cell are these values linked to, right? And in this case, they're linked to this terminal cap rate, right? So what this is saying is, hey, change this value right here, which this, by the way, changes this, and this changes on this other um, tab, our, our equity waterfall, which ultimately changes the IRR. So that's our row. Our column was this one right here, which is NOI growth, which is this here. We hit OK, and there we have it. So now what this tells us here in this data table is, at a 6.25% terminal cap rate and a 3.5% NOI growth rate, this is our LPIRR. So there you have it, uh, scenario analysis tied to the real estate equity waterfall model. Uh, if you have any additional questions, feel free to uh, email me or uh, make comments uh, down below. And uh, thanks for watching.